Oh, this is so beautiful. <laughs> Check out these living corkscrews. Exotic in more ways than one. This newly discovered bacteria is what's called an extremophile a microbe that thrives where life would seem to be impossible. In this case, the salty, alkaline mud at the bottom of dried up Owens Lake in California. I have personally been to many of the most hostile and extreme environments on Earth. NASA scientist Richard Hoover knows all about extremophiles. He and his colleagues cultivate a virtual zoo of them here in his lab at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. This is a high temperature uh, brine and actually we do have we do have microorganisms growing in there. Uh, you see you see when we're swirling. Extremophiles were unknown to scientists until just a few years ago. But then researchers started finding growing things in unlikely places inside the geysers of Yellowstone National Park and within deep sea hydrothermal vents called black smokers. On the other hand, Hoover spends a lot of time studying extremophiles from cold regions. He's gone literally to the ends of the earth to find them, such as this expedition to Antarctica's remote Lake Untersea in 2007, coordinated through the National Science Foundation. Wonderful find, wonderful find. Excellent. Gotta be much better. Once Hoover finds the extremophiles, the race is on back in Alabama to grow them. First order of business, find out what they like to eat. There are a whole array of bacteria uh, that live entirely on chemicals. They don't utilize light, they don't utilize ordinary food. So what is NASA's interest in these extremophiles? Hoover says they may provide telling clues as to what life elsewhere in the solar system or beyond might look like. It's a field of study called astrobiology. It looks at the possibility that life on other worlds might be a lot like the microbes that live in similar harsh conditions here on Earth. I think it is quite possible that when we go to collect samples from the icy moons of Jupiter or to collect samples from the polar ice caps of Mars, we may very well find microorganisms. He says it is even possible that over the course of billions of years, life is spread around the solar system, a sort of cosmic cross-pollination. Microbes could live in the ice deep within comets, frozen there for eons until a collision with another planet or moon delivered it to a new home. So it may be that when we ultimately get a chance to bring back samples of ice from the polar caps of Mars, we might find biology that looks just like Earth life, and it might be that it originated on Earth and was carried to Mars. To test that theory, Hoover okay. cracks open okay. so-called carbonaceous okay. meteorites, which are the remains of cometary debris or water-bearing asteroids that have hit the Earth. This one is part of the Murchison meteorite, which fell to Earth in Australia in 1969. Just kind of feathery crystals. Yeah, feathery crystals it looks like. Being careful to avoid contamination, he examines their insides with an electron microscope. They're older than the planet Earth, uh, which is accepted as being 4.5 billion years in age. <clears throat> so I like to say that uh, these carbonaceous meteorites are actually older than dirt. <laughs> Some of the structures he has imaged from these meteorites are intriguing, bearing striking similarities to bacteria here on Earth. Could these be the fossilized remains of extraterrestrial life? I am convinced that what I am finding in the carbonaceous meteorites are, uh, in, in many cases, biological in nature. It is a highly controversial interpretation. We have for a long time thought that all life as we know it originated on Earth and there isn't any life anywhere else. That's, that's an idea, it's a hypothesis. It's a totally unproven hypothesis. Hoover hopes his work will help get at the truth, whatever that may be. And as interplanetary probes become more sophisticated, scientists may eventually turn up a biological sample, and then we'll know if life out there looks anything like it does here. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt.